Hey guys, Dr. Betts here. Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional videos. Now we're going to talk about chapter 10.4, denaturing proteins. Let's talk about something that we all know. Eggs. You open an egg, raw egg, what do you find? You find the yolk, forget about the yolk. You find this slimy, clear, liquidy stuff called, we call it the egg white. But it's not white at all, it's slimy and clear. Hmm. When you cook it though, it becomes uh, a solid, flaky, white substance that's delicious with, with uh, pepper and salt. It's awesome. Okay? What happens? What's going on there? Well, the slimy, clear, liquidy stuff is actually a, a solution of protein called albumin. The albumin is soluble in water. So it makes the water a little slimy feeling. Now, when you heat up that water, the protein inside that yolk, or that, sorry, that white uh, slimy stuff, starts to do what's called denature. And then it per precipitates or comes out of solution, forms a solid. Why does it do that? Well, that's what this chapter is all about. Now, denaturing a protein disrupts the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure of a protein. It disrupts it. It unravels it. So in other words, we have our nice raveled protein here, our nice natured protein. It's raveled up. It's got alpha helices and beta sheets, and it's got all these tertiary interactions. And when we denature it, it unravels itself. Now, it doesn't go linear. It doesn't go straight, but you get the idea. All the little forces that are holding it together are broken, and they're not going to come back. Okay, most of the time when they when they denature, they don't renature spontaneously. It has to be done probably biochemically, if it can even be done. So keep that in mind. Now, you do not change the primary structure when you denature a protein. Keep that in mind. The primary structure does not change. Just the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. How do we denature proteins? Well, the one that you've already seen, you heat them. You warm them up. Just heat them up, and they die. They, well, they don't die. They open, and they lose their biological function, okay? Which is why we uh, autoclave things. It kills bacteria. How does it kill bacteria? It denatures the bacteria's proteins. That's how you kill them. Acids and bases. Well, that's one common way to make a very nice fish uh, fish dish. I think it's called ceviche or ceviche. I'm, I can't pronounce it right. Sorry. Uh, it's a beautiful dish of salmon or some other kind of fish with lemon or lime juice. Typically, it's lime. Lime tastes better, It's my opinion. Um, it's a beautiful dish, but if you if you ever make it, you'll notice the fish appears to be quote unquote cooking, and that's because you're denaturing the protein. Okay, and it's delicious. Again, you're just denaturing proteins, unraveling them, making them denature. Reducing agents. Reducing agents will tear apart uh, diethyls, uh, disulfide. Remember these. So reducing agents will tear those apart. And that'll break that covalent bond. Detergents. Ooh. Do you ever wonder why you wash your hands with soap or detergent? Do you ever wonder why doctors, when they, they scrub, they get the uh, proteins of the bacteria on their hands, will interact with that soap, and their hydrophobic interactions will be disrupted, and they'll break apart, and they'll lose their biological function. Heavy metals. Heavy metal poisoning. What does it do? It breaks open the disulfide. It breaks open the disulfide bonds, and it messes with the salt bridges. That's what heavy metal poisoning will do. That's why heavy metal poisoning is so bad. Mechanical agitation, huh? Whipped cream, lemon meringue pie, all that kind of stuff. You just denature proteins that way, basically by injecting or, or forcing air into them, and it breaks. It put, just pushes them all apart. I think that's kind of neat. But anyway, that's how you denature proteins. And that's what that's what happens when you're cooking and when you add acid to things. You're just denaturing things. You're making the protein have a nice, uh, what they call it, it's called a natured structure, a nice structure where everything's turned onto itself and every, everything's good, everything's working, to a structure where everything's just kind of flopping around and no one really knows what's going on. Pretty cool, huh? And that's why we cook our food, too, because it makes the protein uh, easier to chew, easier to digest. Uh, you can read about this if you want. It's, it's just about hair relaxing and, and perms and stuff like that. Uh, also about metal poisoning. It's not really part of the course, but I left it in here because some people are interested in this kind of stuff. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to uh, read about this. And 10.5, I'm just going to include this. It's just a one-slide uh, thing. 
just some of the things that uh, peptides, uh, sorry, proteins do in the body. It's not a not a big deal. This is not really that kind of a course to go too deep into what proteins and peptides do in your body. But some of you may be interested in reading about this because it is uh, biological, of course, uh, and it is interesting. Proteins will do a lot. Basically, they're the work they're the workers of this of the body. Um, they do a lot, and they're they're actually fascinating, if you ask my opinion. Um, so take a look at this slide, pause the video, read the book, pull the slides offline, do whatever. Just take a look at them. I think they're interesting. Uh, I'm, but I'm never going to ask you what certain proteins do. Uh, but know that they can do a lot. And maybe familiarize yourself as you, before you move into microbiology, uh, what these things do do. They are quite amazing. So now with that, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry. And I'll see you in 10.6.